Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can do a simple unit test inside of Unity utilizing the Zenject dependency injection library. Um, since it's a little bit different when you use Zenject to do unit tests, but it will allow you to do things like use custom installers in your unit tests so that you can bind whatever interfaces you want to whatever concrete classes you want for testing purposes. So in order to create our testing folder, we want to go up to window and then general test runner, just like with any uh, Unity engine unit test. And because we're doing unit tests, uh, we're going to be wanting a edit mode test assembly folder because we're not launching any scenes for it. So I'm going to create that there and we can call the folder unit tests. So what this is going to do is inside of this folder, it's going to create an assembly definition file. So what this assembly definition file does is basically sets a breakoff point where everything in this folder and beneath it will be treated as a separate project inside of our entire solution for the game project. Which basically means that if we save something in here, it's going to build only the scripts for the unit tests um, assembly definition file and any of its dependencies, which would be over here in references in the top right hand corner. But since our unit tests are going to have their own assembly definition file, we're going to need to reference another assembly definition file that contains all of the code we actually want to test. So in the assets folder for this project, I'm going to create a new assembly definition file by right clicking, going to create assembly definition, and we could call this tutorial scripts, I guess probably could think of a better name. And this would pull in our plugins and our scripts with one exception, which is that Zenject has its own assembly definition file. So if we want to reference Zenject with this assembly definition file, which we do because it depends on Zenject, then we're going to need to add that in as a reference to. So the idea is you can have different assembly definition files, which determine different segments of your total project where you want them to build independently of each other. It's supposed to save time in uh, bigger projects when you don't want to recompile every single script, but just a handful of scripts. But because of that, we need the different files to reference each other. So in the unit tests assembly definition file, we're going to need to add in two references. One is to the Zenject test framework here. And then the other is going to be for the tutorial scripts. Uh, where all of our classes for the game are being built and compiled. So by doing this, we should be able to reference our scripts and also reference everything Zinject related inside of our unit tests that are in this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and create that and now we can create our unit test. So I'm going to right click here, go to create Zinject. You'll notice there's three different types of tests listed here, unit tests, uh, when you want to test individual components, integration tests when you want to test how components work together if you have a bunch that need to do that. And then um, scene tests are where you actually load up a scene and test stuff like game object physics or whatever. So unit tests. So for this video, we're doing a unit test. So I'm going to create that and I'm going to call this greeting unit test. Uh, that's the only script I've really written for this test project. So I guess it's a fitting name. And now we can go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio to edit and then run our test. So inside of the test, you'll notice that it extends from Zenject unit test fixture. Uh, this is required so that we can do all the Zenject things like setting bindings. So I'm going to declare a setup method here, uh, standard to the end unit framework. And I guess I'll just call this bind interfaces, uh, whatever makes sense to you. And inside of this, we will run the installers before every single test. So the installers we're going to want to run are uh, basically going to be whatever I've written before. So let's see here. We have a settings installer and a greeting installer. So the greeting installer, as you can see here, injects game settings and that game settings should be installed from a settings installer. So we would need one instance of a setting installer and then one instance of the greeting installer. Um, we're free to swap out components if we wish. For instance, we could use a totally different installer to bind the interfaces and then we bind that in the actual unit test. 
Now, if we take a look at the greeting installer, you'll also see it's a mono installer. A mono installer attaches to a game object. We're not using game objects right now. So if we wanted to use this installer, what we would actually need to do is extend from a installer, not a mono installer, and then the mono installer would install that base installer. So uh, what that could look like is something like this. So let's see, public class base installer. And I'm just doing this to demonstrate. I believe it's like that. And then your install bindings method goes in there. And when you do install bindings here, you would do base installer dot install into the container. So, and container is capitalized because it's a property. Um, so the idea here is basically that you run an installer inside of the context of the mono installer. So installers can install other installers. But if you want an installer to run inside of a unit test, it should extend from installer. And the generic type parameter should be the name of this class over here. So that would be how you could make that work. But what I'll do here is I'll undo all of that. And then we'll actually make this test installer. Uh, we'll just make that an installer directly so installer of test installer and and that basically does the same thing as up here but i will add in the game settings requirement as well so the idea of the injection up here is that when we bind a game settings it'll be used to resolve this factory inside of the test installer and we can use this test installer inside of the unit test so so now in order to install that installer inside of the greeting unit test, we're going to need to do ins, uh, test installer dot install container. And it looks like we're getting a assembly not referenced issue here. I think we can get around that by going to the assembly definition file. And then if we reference inject here and hit apply at the bottom, let's see if that fixes it. So that at least resolved that issue. Um, and now that we have the test installer.install, we should have game settings install first. So what we're gonna need for the game settings installer is because this is a scriptable object installer commonly used for settings, we're going to need to pull in the exact instance of the scriptable object or the asset file from a location on our project. So how this might look is something a bit like this, where we have the settings installer and we install the exact instance from a resource. And that resource is gonna be from a path, usually inside of our resources directory. And it's going to, and it's going to install to the container of this unit test. So now all we need is a path. So private string test settings path. And how can we get that path? Well, if we go to our project, we can see in the resources. We can see in the resources folder that we have two copies of the asset. We have the live settings installer and we also have the test settings installer. So you can have individual test settings for every unit test you create, and then you just bind the right one you want, and you can store all of your game settings inside of here is generally the idea. So if I right click this and do copy path, we can get the path to this inside of the resources folder. So if we paste that in here, we'll get this. Um, because it is already using install from resource, we get rid of this part because it's already looking in the resources folder. And I believe we don't need the dot asset either. So it'll look just like that for right now, since this file is in the root of our resources folder. So now the settings installer is gonna bind this test settings installer as the settings installer. And the test installer is going to install as well on this container. And once that's done, we're able to run all of our unit tests with whatever bindings happen to exist inside of those installers. Okay, uh, I mean, that was a bit of setup, but it allows us to be quite flexible now uh, because now we can do things like test if iGreeting will resolve inside of our unit test. So let's do one really quick to check that. 
will I greeting resolve using the settings up here? So uh, let's check that. Uh, container dot resolve I greeting, and then we'll set that to a I greeting object. So object, and then we can assert that not null object. Great. Let's do another test. Uh, test public void I greeting resolves as greeting object. So checking that the binding is the right binding you want, I suppose, is not a bad thing. So greeting object container dot resolve I greeting. So now we're checking if the I greeting does resolve as a I greeting object, and I guess we need to convert that. So that will come out as a greeting object. And now we can assert that that is not null. So obviously, if this I greeting object, which is a single object, if we take a look over here, it's a single object. There's only one greeting object inside of our test. If that object resolves and it's not a greeting object, then it's not going to store properly here because it couldn't cast over to a greeting object. So this should only work if iGreeting is in fact a greeting object. And you can go so on and so forth. So another example might be, um, I don't know, iGreeting message resolves as hello world. So uh, we'll do container.resolve iGreeting object. And then with that object, we'll check what the message is. So string message equals this. And then assert, uh, let me see here, for checking the message, I guess we could use r equal. So message is equal to hello world. Now this is going to resolve false. I know that because uh, over in this greeting class, the concrete implementation of I greeting, we can see that the message is set to hello world with an exclamation mark. So that's intentional just to show you guys. Um, of course, if you want to, you can also set up a teardown method, which will run at the end of every single unit test. So I'll just generically call this teardown. And we could say something like container dot, uh, there's something in here for like clearing everything. Unbind all. Yeah. Okay. Why not? So we're sure that the container unbinds everything at the end of every single unit test. Okay, so let's go check out our project in the Unity side of things. So let's see, scripts, unit tests. And now we're going to want to open up the test runner. So window, general, test runner. And we can see our tests here. We can right click on them to run one at a time, or we can just hit run all and do everything at once. And so if you don't already know about the magic of unit testing and all of that, Obviously, it's a lot quicker to do some of these automated tests um, just by hitting run all than it would be to start your game and manually check for every little detail. Also, these tests once written, you can always rerun them again with a couple of seconds. So it'll help you to know if anything broke horribly when you make major changes to your game. So uh, as I would have expected, iGreeting resolves as a greeting object. We know that. Okay, iGreeting does resolve. Uh, really. This is like the requirement for that to succeed anyway. But I greeting message resolves as hello world. We can see that it expected hello world with an exclamation mark, but was hello world. So this might mean that, oh, well, it wasn't the right message we set in the greeting class. So we want to go back to the greeting class and make the changes in order to make this test work. So we could say, go over here to greeting. Um, I think that also needs to be capital. Yeah, because uh, this is a capital W as well. Maybe we want that lowercase and this to be lowercase as well. So we've made our changes, fixed our code in the most basic way possible. And now we can go back to our unit tests. Uh, we'll get that little circle showing that everything compiles. Or maybe it already ran. And uh, now we can hit run all again to see if our tests work. So congratulations, our game has passed all of the tests and is now ready to ship. 
not really, but this is a good start. So hopefully this has helped you guys to understand how to do some basic unit testing inside of Synject. I would recommend you look through the documentation if you have any more questions, but for this video, I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future Unity content.